At this hour, first responders continue searching for construction workers who went missing when the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapsed in Baltimore, Maryland early this morning. One of those workers is hospitalized and another just released about an hour ago. However, the construction company in charge says the missing workers were on break when the bridge collapsed and they are sadly presumed dead by their employer. And joining us now to add some valuable perspective here is Ron Harry Chandran, Dean of the College of Engineering at the University of New Haven. Ron, we appreciate you being with us tonight. Let me ask you this question first. As an engineer, you would likely see some things the rest of us miss here. Just talk a little bit about the collapse in Baltimore from your perspective. What happened? Yeah, so this is, of course, a very unfortunate incident uh, and a rare one. Uh, you know, a ship of this magnitude uh, crashing into the main, one of the two main piers of this bridge. Uh, it's not, not something that happens a lot. Obviously, something went amiss. Uh, and so that's why the accident happened. Uh, we are yet to find out what exactly were the issues. But... Uh, you know, when a ship of that size, height, weight, and speed, uh, although it might have been traveling slowly, it carries a very large amount of energy. And when it impacted one of the main piers, uh, it's almost uh, you know, not survivable. So no matter how the bridge might have been protected, uh, in which case this was an old bridge and it, and it wasn't protected as uh, well as some of the newer bridges might be. But the size of tankers have increased over the years. This is a bridge that's built back in the 70s, so uh, it's much older. Uh, and it just wasn't prepared to handle that kind of impact. Uh, so it's not a surprise that it collapsed, uh, but of course, a very rare occurrence. Now, is there any indication that there was something wrong with the key bridge here? I think there were some questions about the way that it fell, right? The entire length of the bridge collapsed, not just one section of it. But was there anything that could have stopped it from the whole thing collapsing? Uh, no, it's just that that type of bridge is supported on the two main piers, and when one of those piers is knocked out, uh, it is, you know, it's just not possible for the bridge to survive, and it's just a progressive collapse. We have one section falls, and then progressively the rest of the structure collapses. Yeah, Ron, uh, the only it up. way to have avoided such a collapse is if the ship did not impact the pier, but hit, uh, you know, between the piers, it was a tall uh, container as well, uh, if it had hit the bridge decking, uh, that might have been survivable. But this particular impact, uh, there was no way. And it, it's not uh, anything that is structurally deficient in the bridge. Well, let me ask you this, uh, because that, that, that dovetails with my next question. I understand that this is the third longest, what's called a continuous truss bridge in the world. Can you explain to us what that means? And is that why once one part of the bridge was compromised, the rest of it kind of followed and, and, and came down? Uh, yes, partly yes. Uh, I mean, it is a long span, and it's supported, as I said, by the two main piers. There are other piers on, on the approachways, uh, but with such a, a, a long span in between the two piers, when one of those piers goes down, uh, there is no way really to for the bridge to stand up. Uh, it just, you know, it's not built that way. The piers are there to hold it up. And so when the beer, one of the piers goes, uh, it's just going to come down. So we have to bring up the state of Connecticut's bridges here, okay? So many of them are in need of repair. We have to mention infrastructure. Keeping in mind the key bridge in Baltimore didn't just fail, as we've, as we've been talking about. It was hit by a cargo ship. Is there anything we should learn from this incident? Well, the good news is that in Connecticut, we don't experience those types of cargo vessels uh, for the most part. Uh, and so for smaller uh, vessels, uh, the designs of piers or protective uh, designs of piers against impact uh, can be quite sufficient. Now, we should be careful uh, of providing those kinds of reinforcements around piers where impact uh, of vessels might be anticipated. Uh, those can be expensive retrofits, but again, for smaller vessels, there are a variety of different techniques uh, that could be used that are not as costly. Uh, when it comes to very large container vessels, again, I don't know that Connecticut has too many uh, waterways where those large ships are there. So we are fortunate in that way that uh, we are not going to experience that, hopefully. Great insight. Thank you so much. Ron Harry Chandran from the University of New Haven. We appreciate your time.
Thank you very much for having me. Former